So um, I just wanted to offer a very brief um, bit of introduction to IMTFI to those who are new um, to this wonderful and strange operation that we have going on here. Um, we were founded in 2008 um, with a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, for whose support we're quite grateful. That grant has been recently renewed. And we were founded um, at a time when there was a lot of excitement around the potential of mobile uh, financial services, mobile money or mobile money transfer and mobile banking um, for financial inclusion in the developing world. Um, but we were struck by a few issues, um, mainly issues around what was happening on the research front. On the research front, what little had been done was either coming from um, an industry perspective or coming from the perspective of of um, foreign experts and other agencies, um, development agencies and philanthropic organizations that would kind of drop in to a country where a mobile money service was being deployed for a short period of time, do um, a series of surveys, create you know, very useful baseline data, but then, but then go. And we thought, you know, coming from the point of view of anthropology, and I should say that not everybody here is an anthropologist, but there is a preponderance of anthropologists in the room, that, that something was missing. And what was missing was really a sense of the kind of on-the-ground experiences with existing forms of money-saving, money transfer, and local credit practices, and how those existing forms were going to start interacting with some of these new technological channels for banking and money transfer. Um, the other thing that we, that we thought was, was missing was that we weren't really getting the perspective of researchers from the countries where mobile money was being deployed. Um, so we wanted to both lend a kind of deeper sense um, and a richer sense of what was happening in the changing landscapes of money savings and, and, and remittance behavior and that sort of a thing in places where mobile money was being rolled out. And we wanted to see if we could create new collaborations. So what we've done, and now we are doing it in, a, in a, another call for proposals that just closed, incidentally, what we've done is um, issued calls for proposals every year for the past four years that we've gotten out globally. Um, this is more of a challenge than you might imagine. Um, you know, we think of the world as being completely wired and interconnected and email being the end all and be all, but you'd be surprised how many people um, find our call um, on paper and respond to it um, in kind. We wanted to get a call out to uh, both to research institutions in the developing world, but also to smaller institutions where there, were, there are really excellent researchers, but without streams of funding to support their work. And then we wanted to fund longer term projects so that people really had a chance to get into um, the phenomena that they were studying, spend a good deal of time with it, um, spend time with some of these new services as they were being rolled out, as they were unfolding, but also spend time in the communities where they were being rolled out so that they could get a, a better sense of those communities' own existing financial practices um, and financial portfolios to understand whatever changes might, might come down the road as a result of these new um, services. And the other thing that we did, which is what we're doing right now, is instead of having a model where we funded research and then sent people on their way and then waited for the results to come back at the very end, we decided that we would have people all come here to UC Irvine for the most part midway through their projects. I know some of you have just gotten started, some of you are almost finished, but for the most part at the midpoint. Um, so that first of all, all of the researchers that we had funded could meet each other and could share their experiences with each other and share methodological and theoretical ideas with each other to then take back as they finished their projects. And so that second of all, we would have a kind of check-in on where people were midway through so that we could collectively think about how everyone could take their project um, through the next stages and to completion. Um, and that, that brings up an important point for the next couple of days. The presentations that you'll be hearing are works in progress. And so I hope that you know, we can all listen with a kind of gener intellectual generosity and a kind of commonality of project here so that we can help each other um, think through the next stages um, of, of this work. And you know, when you think about this work, I just want to kind of very briefly underscore that What's unique about what's going on here is I think that in the social science literature, in the development world, in the policy world, um, 
we're used to thinking of money in particular ways. We're, think, we're used to thinking of money in the domain of poverty alleviation as something that people lack and somehow need or need access to roots to get um, cash in order to fulfill their livelihoods. Um, but, but here, you know, we're thinking not just of money in terms of its classic functions as a means of exchange, a store of value, a unit of account, um, and so forth. But I think what's come out of the work of IMTFI so far is a very rich sense of the way in which money serves as a kind of enduring social infrastructure and a set of overlapping infrastructures that help people make do and get by in a whole bunch of ways. Um, we're hoping that, that we can illustrate some of those ways um, in the work that, that we're producing so that we can think about the implications of the social infrastructures of money, um, both for inclusion in the broadest sense um, and social justice projects. So um, with that, there um, just I actually forgot one thing, which is that um, we're also delighted here to have Liz Loesch, um, the Director of Culture, Art, and Technology and, and a specialist in di digital rhetoric at UC San Diego, who is here and, um, as in years past, will be live blogging the conference, and those posts will go up um, as they come for folks to follow along and get um, another kind of take on the material that's being presented. So I think there's no other announcements? Yep. yep. Great. Well, then let me um, welcome the first panel up here to the podium and also Professor Nina Bandel, who will be the chair and moderator for our first session. Um, Professor Bandel is a professor of sociology and the graduate director in the Department of Sociology here at UC Irvine, who is an economic soci sociologist and a specialist in um, foreign dire direct investment and flows of currency and political economy in the um, former communist countries of Eastern Europe. Um, and a wonderful colleague here in the, the cluster of people that we have at UC Irvine who are thinking about money and finance in in ways that the economists sometimes leave to the wayside. No offense to the economists in the room. Um, she's also the, the co-director of the Center for Organizational Research here at UCI, and we're very pleased that she can join us. And finally, she sits on IMTFI's Academic Advisory Board. And she will introduce the panelists, and we'll get underway. So thank you. <laughs> 